Now, okay. the other question was about hair care. So, yes. Yeah, so actually, um, I was gonna say this will probably be probably be the start of you know just getting a little bit more into the science of things. So, if you if you don't mind spending a little bit of time on it and um, you know kind of just expound a little bit. So, I'm gonna start off with um, you know. Do you provide coaching for your clients as far as the damage that we were talking about and the maintenance and stuff like that? And then I'll probably lead into, um, you know, another question. Yes, I do offer coaching. Coaching. So what it is, that is a consultation. So if you book a consultation and you have questions, I answer those. We come up with a game plan for whatever ideas you have for your hair, whether it's hair growth or it's just a certain style working with your hair a certain way that you want to wear your hair some women just want their curls to come back so if it's a matter of how to get your hair one texture or how to care for it all of that is under coaching but what it is is they would book a consultation and i would help them with that now if you book a service then the consultation comes with the service so every time you come i do coach you and give you information on how to keep up with your hair. Um, I give them an analysis of what I think about their hair. If I think a certain style is good for them, that it may be uh, damaging, damaging to their hair or pulling some of their edges out or whatever the case may be, then of course I'm gonna let them know, I'm gonna share that with them and say, look, I, I don't think that this is the right style for you. Or if I've done that style and I realized that it was not good on their hair or I noticed a difference, I'm going to let them know that that style was not the style that we should have done. We need to do something that has less tension on their hair and vice versa. Like I just, if if they want a style and they want it to last, but their hair texture won't really last as long in this style. So say you come in and you're like, okay, I just want something real simple, but I want it to last for a month. And you have like 4C hair or or something a little more textured than 4C, then two feet in braids, that's a very simple style that anybody can wear. You can do it on any hair texture, but the coarser or the more textured your hair is, the less time that style will last on you. And also the finer your hair is, your hair is less likely to last, but that style could last somebody for one month if their hair isn't extremely fine and thin or isn't extremely thick and coarse. So everything varies depending on the person, but every time they come to me, a consultation and me giving you a game plan for your hair is included. Okay. So since since it sounds like you, you got the science down, you're the expert, so. um, like I mentioned earlier, like say for instance, you are I don't know, Kawhi Leonard just got braids or whatever the case is. And, you know, braids are pretty hot right now. Would you agree? Yeah. So, and you got some yes, amazing braid oh styles I that I have so seen, too. That are booked for braids. Yeah. I, yeah. You got a ton of clients. I mean, you say you got a ton of clients, but, I mean, I mean I've mean, i seen some of, the, some of the work. It just makes you kind of want to grow your hair just to get them. So... I guess, you know, like I said, the summertime's okay. coming up. Usually in the wintertime, everybody's kind of stagnant. You're locked in the house. You're not doing too much movement. Um, and, you know, from what I've seen, you know, when you're playing basketball, you're whatever the case is, people braid their hair, but they can get messed up. And for the styles that you're doing, and, yeah. you know, even even myself have come in, having come to you before, um, you know, I guess what would you suggest to a client to actually maintain the braids, especially with the summer coming up. Okay. And it's rule, hot. And you know everybody's going to be, oh, it's humid. And I, gotta... I know. Well, rule number one for every style that you have, tie your hair up at night. I don't care if you just have your hair all over the place, curly, whatever, and you're planning on getting it done the next day. You washed it and you didn't blow it out or whatever. Always wrap your hair up in satin every single night. Okay, so in satin. In satin. Satin keeps, it, it protects your hair from breaking, and it also keeps the moisture in your hair, and it keeps your hair from being frizzy. So it helps with the braids because, you know, when you sweat and you go out there and 
I mean, even if you're sweating from just working out or whatever, or just from going outside in Texas because it's so hot, okay? And mm -hmm. you sweat, and then you put that satin on your hair overnight, and those little frizzy pieces, they, they go down, and it keeps that moisture in there. So that's number one to protecting any hairstyle you have, but also protecting your hair. Now, you can get a satin pillowcase. That always helps because a cotton pillowcase would break your hair. But a satin pillowcase would help. Do you suggest sleeping a certain way? Like maybe not laying on the hair or does it really matter? That doesn't really matter. It's it's inevitable. I mean, it's just hard. You can't not mm -hmm. sleep on your Because I've known of people to be like, oh, I got to sleep like this and, you know, well, you know, crouch up in a certain way just so that they don't mess their hair up. Well, that's good to do like temporarily. Like if you're taking a nap or if you just really want your hair to be like in tip top shape and exactly how it is that night you want it to be like that the next morning that's one thing you can do but i wouldn't recommend anybody sleep a certain way that they shouldn't be sleeping i don't want you to have neck or back problems or any of that just because you're trying to protect your hairstyle you gotta have a neck brace so you can keep it your, your head you know up because all night you didn't sleep <laughs> nowhere <laughs> matter of fact just like sleep sleep straight up in a chair just like this with a neck brace on if i wanted you to keep your hair a certain way and you have to sleep a certain way that's how i would recommend you sleep but Man, i know even some dudes who won't sleep on their back just because they think that it's gonna mess the waves up and i'm just kind of like <laughs> i personally think like if you got them you got them but i mean hey i mean you sleeping any part of your hair that's touching something especially when it's pressed up against something has the potential to to mess up or change or whatever but it's if you put a satin scarf on your head or do rag for guys if you do that then that protects the hair and you may have to brush it or or run your fingers through it but that's gonna hold that style for you whether your hair is straight whether it's short or long you have curls braids you're wearing your hair loose and down whatever the case is you or up you wrap your hair up with with satin every single night that's number one okay. to maintaining and protecting a hairstyle Okay, and I guess before we get to this next question, could you expand on expound on um the I guess what's post number one to main maintenance? What's post number one? Okay. Yeah, we've already established it doesn't matter how you sleep, doesn't matter if you're doing so, that, and you want to wear satin. So, what else would you do? Recommend to uh, maintain, you know, your braids or your hair, especially with this heat coming up. I see this question below. That's what's like taking my attention. What is your favorite style to do? Um, I would say a sew in. I really like to do sew ins. So, and we will be getting to the sew in section in a okay. second. So back, so back to what we were talking about. Um, second to maintaining your wait, I froze. Can you see me? Hi yes. guys. Okay, so second to protecting your braids would be to moisturize your hair. So when, of course, when you have your hair braided, especially in the summertime, your scalp is exposed. And when you're sweating, like you said, for an athlete or something like that, or somebody that's working out, that sweat has salt in it. So it dries out your hair. So hmm. if you spray your hair with oil or you have oil with a little a dropper and you can put that along the uh, parts like where your scalp is and also inside of the braid, making sure that your hair is moisturized. That will also help you protect your style and protect your hair. So it does both. Maintaining a hairstyle and protecting your hair, they go hand in hand because what you do every night to maintain that hairstyle and protect your hair ultimately is what's gonna make your hair look better. The healthier, the healthier your hair is, the better your hair will look. So, so I mean, well, while you're while you're sweating and stuff like that, like even if you're not an athlete and you're just outside and it's 108 degrees, you know, out here. Yeah. And there and you're sweating, you know, male or female. Yeah. Is there anything that you can do? Does there, the sweat actually damp? I mean, mess it up or? Well, it doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Well, okay. It can mess up your hair because if your hair is natural. And that moisture, I mean, not moisture, but water, which is moisture, but sweat is salty. So it's drying your hair, hair out, but it's also making your hair wet. So that wetness is going to react, it's going to uh, 
activate all those products that you have. And then mm -hmm. once the uh, salt penetrates that, then it's going to dry it out. And it's going to take some of that product. It's going to remove that from your, your hair. So you're just standing okay. outside and whatever is in your hair is either sweating down onto your face or your body and leaving your hair. So you will have to put something, you first off, moisture, in order to make sure your hair is moisturized and tying it down at night. Those are the two things that you would need to do, especially with sweating. I've actually seen guys with uh, braids play with a satin do-rag or go to the gym with a satin do-rag um, and things like that. So I guess that is it. So I guess, I mean, do you have any other uh, tips for maintenance as far as that's concerned or? I do. Well, one thing that you just mentioned, you said that you see guys want to go work out with a do-rag on. So mm -hmm. it's good to keep your hair tied up in that satin because when that moisture is hitting it, the product, instead of falling down onto your face, it's kind of, it's holding it in place. It's getting on the do-rag as well, but it's holding it in place where it won't drip down on your face and break you out or on your clothes or whatever, but it's keeping it there right where it should be. And it's still protecting your hair, like keeping that moisture in there. And so it's not giving your, your hair room to get frizzy and swell and, and mess up. Because once you go out there and you do whatever you're doing and your hair starts to dry up and swell, and then you go to put the do-rag on, even though it will, it will help recover the style, if you had it on in the first place, it'll protect the style much better than it will after you sweat and you let your hair swell up and then you put it on. Okay. So it's a preventative thing. That's why they put it on first. Um, another thing that I've noticed with braids is using wrapping lotion or a foam. So what's in there is, it's almost like a, a liquid gel, okay? And so okay. you know gel like holds your hair in place where it won't move. So if you get little frizzy pieces or if your style is not looking as fresh and you've been putting your do-rag on and you've put some moisture on your hair, you can put that foam over all of your hair and then tie your hair down with the do-rag. You can also put the oil on it with the foam and then tie your hair down with the do-rag. You wake up the next day and I mean, it almost looks like your braids were redone. Well, I think that the you know, next time for me and for anybody else that's out there, I think that's a lot of great information. Yes. And uh, you know, hopefully any of the athletes that's out there watching that ever come across this, um, yeah, you can thank Kaylee. Matter of fact, you can go find them. We'll definitely let the uh, let you know how you can contact her uh, at the end. But also, don't forget, it's down at the bottom. And if anybody has used um, Krishana in the past or Prim Up, please make sure to continue to leave your feedback as we go through the interview. And I guess we can now get to, you know, some of everybody's favorite question. It is going to be about hair extensions. So, and I think this is also your favorite thing to talk about. Oh, wait, hold on. Before we get to that, infamous question. <laughs> is it okay. necessary to, to, to you know, or do you, or can you actually scratch? <laughs> or do you got to, you know? That is a good question, right? Okay, uh -huh. so depending on how your hair is done, your extensions or whatever, you might not, or even if you just have braids as a guy, you might not be able to like get under the braid or whatever. So that's where this comes into play. Uh -huh. And I mean, I prefer the head hitting because that will help protect your style more so. Or it won't mess up your hair more so than like digging in your head. Because after you do all that, it's like you're almost unraveling that braid. And I know a lot of my clients do it under their sew ins. They get combs, they get the end of a comb a rat tail comb and they like stick it in there and, and get to uh. their scalp all good. And I understand that it feels so good. It's such a relief because it's like that itch that you can't get to. However, mm -hmm. not only does it mess up the foundation of your sewings or mess up your braids, but it also breaks off your hair. Ooh. So don't do it. Hit it. Take the concussion instead. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take the concussion, guys. Don't don't start digging the pants. I gotta, you know, I'm 
Oh, for it. I didn't that. know. I didn't know. Maybe that's what I need to do in five years. I need to come out with a solution and a utensil to get under those braids that won't break your hair off, but it will relieve that itch that you cannot scratch. You know how many how many lives you would save by just stopping you know, this right here? You know how rich I would be if I could come up with something like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you're catting that idea. I need All right, to. well.